Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the Esoteric Teaching Community. Today's selection is an essay entitled Eternal Persons, Part 2. In the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is helping Arjuna by giving him spiritual enlightenment, beginning with the truth about the living entity. The most elementary item of spiritual truth is that the living entity is an eternal, individual spirit soul. Natvevaham jatunasham natvangneme janadhipaha nachayva nabhavishyama sarvevayam ataparam Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Bhagavad Gita 2.12 In the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna gave many learned-sounding arguments why he should not fight the battle of Kurukshetra. Nevertheless, he could not solve his problem. Therefore, Krishna's first instruction to Arjuna was that although he spoke many learned words, he was not really wise because he was lamenting over the condition of the material body. The same Vedic truth given to Arjuna is given to everyone who poses as very learned, but factually has but a poor fund of spiritual knowledge. Hardly anyone in the world knows even the first item of spiritual truth. People who have been studying spiritual things their entire life do not even know the difference between material and spiritual existence. Therefore, they become confused by learned-sounding theories that are actually nonsense. Many confused people with a poor fund of spiritual knowledge think that God and I are one. Now, because I am in illusion, I am thinking that God is different from me. But when the illusion is finished, then I and God will become one. This is the Mayavadi theory of monism. But actually, this theory is not correct. As Krishna states in this shloka of Bhagavad Gita, God is always a distinct individual different from you and me. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and we are infinitesimal living entities. It is not that we are equal to God, or that we can become God in any way. We are similar to God in quality, but vastly unequal in quantity. Therefore, those who are thinking that they are equal to God in every respect are correct only in their belief that they are illusioned. They are indeed illusion, but not in the way that they think. Na mam dushkriti no mudha prapadyante naradamaha mayaya parita asuram bhavam ashritaha Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. Bhagavad Gita 715. Such illusion people have been designated by Krishna as Mayaya Aparita Jnana. Although they pose as very learned scholars, the essence of their knowledge has been taken away by Maya. Therefore they say that God and ordinary human beings are the same. This is called Asura Bhava. Asura Bhava means not to accept the supremacy of the Lord but to think him as one with all individual souls. But that is not a fact. That is a poor fund of spiritual knowledge. Actually, when one becomes advanced in spiritual knowledge, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam janmanamante jnanavan mang prapadyate vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sudurlabaha After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. 
Bhagavad Gita 719. In due course of time, after many, many births, when one actually comes to the platform of knowledge, he can understand that Vasudeva is great and I am small, I am insignificant. Therefore he surrenders. This is the sign of knowledge. If he does not surrender to Krishna, it is due to ignorance. To think of Krishna and an ordinary person as equal is not knowledge, it is illusion. But according to the esoteric teaching, when one surrenders to Vasudeva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it is understood that he has actually attained spiritual knowledge. Anyone who takes shelter of Krishna by accepting the words of Krishna, believing in him, is really in knowledge. Just like Krishna says, Man mana bhava man bhakto, madhyaji mang namaskuru, mam evaishyasi satyang te, pratijane priyosime. Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Bhagavad Gita 1865 Krishna orders that Mam ekam sharanam braja You surrender unto me alone. You become my devotee and always think of me. Man mana bhava mad bhakto. You become my devotee. Mad yaji. You worship me. Mang namaskuru. You offer your obeisances unto me. Illusioned persons who are poor in knowledge think, It is too much. Krishna is demanding too much. I can't do this. This is just sophistry. No. Krishna's words are not sophistry. He is giving the real truth, the real position. Otherwise, without surrendering to Krishna, if you think that you are Krishna, that is an illusion. Avishuddha buddhaya, contaminated intelligence. Ye nye ravindaksha vimukta maninas, tvai ashta bhavad avishuddha buddhaya, aruhya krichchrena bharang padang tataha, patyantyadho nadrita yusmar angrahyaya. Someone may say that aside from devotees who always seek shelter at the Lord's lotus feet, there are those who are not devotees but who have accepted different processes for attaining salvation. What happens to them? In answer to this question, Lord Brahma and the other demigods said, O lotus-eyed Lord, although non-devotees who accept severe austerities and penances to achieve the highest position may think themselves liberated, their intelligence is impure. They fall down from their position of imagined superiority because they have no regard for your lotus feet. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.2.32 Avishuddha Buddhayaha Because they cannot understand Krishna, their knowledge is imperfect or impure. Perfect knowledge is there in every living entity, but it is contaminated or covered by contact with maya, illusion. One who can understand the positions of Krishna and himself, and his relationship with Krishna, is called mukta, liberated. Mukti means to know perfectly what is our relationship with Krishna. That is real mukti or liberation. Antavanta ime deha Nityas yokta shariranaha, anasino prameyasya tasmad yudhyasya bharata. Only the material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is subject to destruction. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharata. Bhagavad Gita 2.18 Krishna was encouraging Arjuna to fight because he was a kshatriya. It was Arjuna's duty to fight to establish dharma in the world. He had to do this through fighting, because here in this material world, violence is required to protect the social system from exploitation by rogues and criminals. Because in the material world, everyone is a competitor. Everyone is trying to become the supreme. So naturally, there will be violence. At the present moment, there is violence in so many places around the world 
because two or more parties are trying to become the supreme political leaders. This competition, or fierce struggle for existence, is going on everywhere, all over the world. Out of ignorance, everyone is trying to become the supreme. So there must be competition and violence. So expecting that there will be violence, the Kshatriya class is required in the Vedas to protect society. Just like in the state government, expecting that there will be criminal violence, the police department and the military are maintained. You cannot avoid violence in this material world. It is useless to try to end violence. Even Mahatma Gandhi, who started the nonviolence movement, 